this documentary, I will be speaking with one of the residents who has agreed to speak with me on his personal experiences inside the direct provision system. The direct provision system was established in late 99 as a result of the influx of refugees into Ireland. We will be focusing our attention on the interview with the residents, his experiences, and we will also be speaking to uh, one of the media representatives from the NGO, uh, NASC, who helped to support the refugee to settle into the various communities within the Cork Area uh, Council. First of all, can you tell us your name and where are you from? Um, my name is Chison Amadi and I'm from Nigeria. But direct provision, so, so what are the advantages of living in direct provision system? Uh, there is a lot of advantages, like depends like now, like the people in direct provision, they can work and they can go to schools as well, so. Unlike before? Unlike before, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. So there are some of the advantages coming to, you know, uh, Ireland, you know, and yeah. living in Ireland? Um, like, compared to where I come from, like, I didn't get to realize that I was going to be living in, with other people from different cultures, you know. So do you think different. Ireland has been a safe country? Yeah, it's a safe country. Yeah. So you think Ireland has been good to you? Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, you know, uh, cultural change, how does that affect your, you know, affect you as, uh, as an individual? Um, I got to learn a lot of things, you know. So it's just, it's just to live and adapt. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in, in the direct culture system, you provide, you know, you are provided with shelter, food, you know, and uh, accommodation, uh, accommodation, and all of that. Yeah. Okay. So. Now let's talk about the because there be some you know issue people complain about the length of stay at the centre. Yeah. How has that affected you? You know, uh, as an individual. Well, well, like I would say the the this, the, the like like the amount they keep people in the direct provision for the system like for that they just do it so long so. And sometimes, you know, it's not really good, you know, it's, it could resolve to like, you know, mental illness and all that. But have you seen anybody, you know, with such, yeah. you know, you yeah. have? Yeah, I have. Oh, okay. So you are saying that the system for, you know, the reproduction is good, yeah. but the letter of stay at the, at the centre before, you know, getting a response back from the authority, you know, yeah. is taking too long. Yeah. And that has negative, you know, it has a negative effect, effect yeah. on, 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 on the health yeah. of the, the, the residents. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is there any uh, NGO that provide any support services to, you know, uh, asylum seekers and the refugees? Yeah, the, the eggs. Um, we've got an ask and... Can you tell us your name and your district represents? My name is Jennifer Duan and I represent NASC, the Migrant and Refugee Rights Centre here in Cork. Where was NASC set up? Up in 2000 actually. It was set up um, uh, by a bunch of grassroots organisations here in Cork, some church faith-based organisations and some community development organisations and individual activists. And it was set up as a direct response to the establishment of the direct provision system and the dispersal of asylum seekers to direct provision centres in the Cork area. Has been the response of the, uh, the refugee and asylum seeker to NASC? Um, I suppose uh, NASC is actually, the, the word is the Irish word for link and the idea of NASC is that we link migrants, refugees and asylum seekers to their rights. Um, so I suppose we've always seen in the 18 years that we've been in Cork um, a huge response I think from uh, those communities in terms of uh, the supports that we offer to people um, and that it's very much a, a kind of an, a, an empowering model in the sense that um, 
when we, in that idea of linking migrants to their rights, we're linking people to them being able to advocate for themselves and people being able to um, be aware of, of, of what their rights are and, and fight for those rights. And, and um, in that sense, I think the response has always been very um, good. Yeah, very positive. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So what are some of the, the issues these refugees ask, uh, ask for when uh, they come to NASC you know, to seek help? Hmm. Um, I suppose uh, because we're the only um, a service of our kind, I suppose the only kind of non-governmental organization yeah. that does the kind of work that we do in Cork, yeah. um, we see... Um, all sorts of migrants kind of across the board. So we would see refugees, we would see some seekers, we would see migrants, we would see EU nationals and non-EU nationals, kind of everyone. So we would deal with a pretty wide range of issues that people come into us um, around. So it can be anywhere around kind of uh, residency permissions in terms of being able to stay in the country, work permits, yeah. um, naturalization, citizenship. Um, we work with a lot of people in the asylum process, but primarily around kind of issues in the direct provision centers and so kind like of conditions. Basically, you talked about legal issues. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, we would work, we're, I suppose we're primarily a legal service, so we would pr provide yeah. m mostly it's around support, I suppose, in uh, kind of navigating what yeah. are very complex systems. Yeah. yeah. So we provide legal advice, we provide information and support, we would kind of advocate for people in the sense of like when they need additional support and maybe can't afford a solicitor on their own, sometimes kind of figuring out what forms you're supposed to fill out and what you're supposed to do it can yeah. be quite difficult for people yeah. so we just kind of help people try and navigate that system Does that a bit. With some, maybe some sort of uh a language barrier as well. Absolutely, a lot of people would have kind of language issues and then sometimes unfortunately you would see even people um, who would have literacy issues as well so yeah. maybe they are, it's fine in their own language but being able to read English can be quite difficult and and to be honest I think a lot of the kind of um, documentation and applications and things you'd see say on the Department of Justice website yeah. um, can be very difficult to understand even yeah. if you're perfectly fluent in English so yeah. Um, so yeah so some people just need kind of additional supports and things so like that. You, you kind of of, uh, provide uh, maybe like uh, translate uh, you translate sometimes yeah yeah sometimes um, I suppose we would have people on staff who would speak kind of multiple languages and then if necessary we can always kind of bring someone in to, to help people with languages as well um, but yeah it, yeah that definitely and happens we also provide, we provide uh, some sort of um, a workshop or a training program for these refugees as well? We do do some workshops and trainings. I suppose NASC used to do a lot more of that kind of work in the past when it was kind of much more of a community development type of organization. Yeah. Um, when it kind of shifted, I suppose there was a kind of a strategic shift in the organization maybe about 10 years ago yeah. um, where we uh, it was actually uh, very much demand led. It was very much that people were having so much difficulties around getting legal advice and information yeah. about their applications and things like that, that people were looking for a lot more of a legal service and we so we shifted a lot more into that yeah. kind of frame I suppose but um, but we would still offer things from time to time yeah. absolutely we would have people and come also, in and, and we also do like maybe a sort of a collaboration with other loads like, other of yeah we would work with loads of other organizations here in Cork and uh, nationally and internationally um, who would advocate for the same kind of things that yeah. we would advocate for yeah. and things like that so the refugees yeah oh that's very good so does NAS uh, work with that provision we do. Yeah. Uh, I suppose well, we work, uh, maybe not with direct vision, but we work kind of um, supporting people who are living in the direct vision system yeah. um, in terms of, um, you know, uh, working to try and improve conditions, but also yeah. to really kind of look to uh, make calls for the introduction of a more humane yeah. system. Um, I suppose direct vision has a pretty... It does, it does on welfare. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we would work with a lot of people on kind of, yeah, people who want to make complaints about the situation at their yeah. end, people who are having difficulties maybe with um, centre staff or management or things yeah. like that. Um, and, you know, people experience a lot of isolation, a lot of uh, mental uh, illness as, as a result of being in that system yeah. um, and the long waits in terms of the application yeah. processing times and things like that. So we would try and support people who are in that situation yeah, who have experienced um, that. I spoke to one of the you know, one of our guests earlier, and uh, one of the things he said was the length of stay. Hmm. That is a big problem. Absolutely. You know? uh, sometimes that kind of, uh, you know, impact them in, in terms of 
you know, negatively in terms of their health. Absolutely. So it was, it was one of the things that he mentioned. And the length of time, I think, as well, without knowing what is happening. I think what we yeah. hear from a lot of people is that um, absolutely length of time is the, the biggest thing that we hear. Not understanding when. And not, not knowing, yeah, not knowing when you're going to hear the next step. And the, in a lot of ways, I think a lot of people would express it that, like that people almost feel forgotten, yeah. like that they think somehow their application got mislaid yeah. or that they've just been forgotten by the International Protection Office. Yeah. And in reality, it's just that it takes so it's, it's long just, yeah. um, that, uh, and, and you know, I think from our perspective, yes, we would obviously love to see the International Protection Office communicating with people on a regular basis and saying, look, there's an ex, you know, this should take three months, this should yeah. take six months, yeah. this should take nine months. But then on top of that, in addition to communicating that information, is that they need to speed up the decision making. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, I suppose I would be saying that they need to improve the decision making. Yeah. So I think the Process. issue, the issue, the biggest issue we would hear besides the length of time is very much around a kind of a lack of trust yeah. in the decision making yeah. um, and a feeling that um, the the decision maker. So when you're sitting across from someone and you're yeah. giving an, your interview and things like that. There's not a lot of trust that that person is yeah, really yeah, exactly. listening to what yeah, you're saying, yeah, exactly. is really taking it on board. They might just be going, um, like we hear anecdotally a lot, that people would have this sense that the, that decision maker is just going to Google, looking yeah. up their country yeah. and seeing, oh, well, that's a safe country, so you're yeah. fine. Not the, when not listening yeah. to the person. Actually, they're not really understanding exactly. you know, the background of you exactly. know, these people. So I think, yes, so we'd, obviously from our perspective, some of the biggest issues we'd see that have a knock-on effect for yeah. the, the, the living in the direct vision system yeah. is the length of time, the lack of trust in the decision making, yeah. and I think a general sense of a kind of a culture of disbelief almost yeah, in the yeah. Department of Justice where yeah. there's a sense that everyone is... is um, it's a sort of a blanket decision for them. Yeah. If, you know, for somebody, they just, maybe like you said, they Google it up and say, oh, your country is safe. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. You know, kind, and of, just kind of wave it, wave it aside. This kind of sense of, of like thinking everyone is, is uh, like they like to use words like bogus and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. false and yeah. failed and all. Yeah. And, and I just, um, to me, that creates an entire kind of culture in, in, in that environment that means that all the decision makers are operating in a culture yeah. of kind of disbelief. So about the this issue that you, 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 you've talked about, is there any, what, what I would call that major uh, challenge is faced by NASC as, as it tries to help these uh, new immigrants? The major challenges faced by NASC, I suppose, would be, um, I suppose, the same as any kind of organization that's looking for uh, uh, concrete changes from a government. Yeah, I think when yeah. you're when you do a lot of work that's around looking for reforms or looking for changes from yeah. government, it's very like it's very with, dealing with immigrants. Yeah, it's very challenging work in the sense that you only end up ever getting incremental change yeah, yeah. and then you know the people that you're advocating for and the people that you're representing kind of don't um don't understand why it's so incremental yeah, exactly. and so you're operating basically between these kind of you yeah, know where yeah. you've got the brick wall of, yeah, exactly. of the state yeah. and the difficulties faced yeah. by um refugees and asylum seekers every day so and trying like to navigate that yeah, yeah that can be very challenging yeah. um because yeah you fight so hard to to make change and then change comes so slowly so like so kind of snail paced yeah. and and then you know you think you've worked so hard you think you've gotten so much and then and then something rolls back again, and so exactly. it just feels like a constant fight. And I so think that's in, quite challenging. In, in terms of um, in terms of uh, the community support, hmm. how's that been? The community support yeah. has been huge, absolutely. Like I think, look, NASC wouldn't function without um, having yeah, having the community, community to yeah. work yeah. with. And yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like I think, um, as much as we you know want to be um, helping people and, uh, and supporting people in in being able to live their yeah. best lives in yeah. Ireland, you know, is that like look, yeah, it's yeah. it's. It's, That's wonderful to hear. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's why we do it, but also, yeah. like, look, it's also yeah. great to um, see people having success, to yeah. see people kind of uh, getting a permission after waiting for long periods of time, yeah. or getting a house after having moved out of, you know, those kind of things are so amazing to see and so amazing yeah. to see people kind of settle into the community yeah. and get to make their own contributions and, and all that stuff. Like, it's absolutely why so, we do it, I you mean, know? In terms of, uh, 
and that's working with the uh, uh, working with the community and, and the refugees and all of that. So what have been the most rewarding experience? Yes, you know, absolutely, in, absolutely, yeah. And we like we would have a lot of um, migrants on staff. I suppose I'm a migrant myself. Yeah. Um, I'm obviously not from a refugee or an asylum-seeking background, yeah. but um, you know, I suppose um, it makes it you know like it, the whole environment is very kind of yeah. welcoming and, and you know? diverse yeah. and all yeah. that. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. So definitely. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much you know, for giving us the time to uh, interview you and give us your, uh, giving us your perspective on this. So do you have anything to say to our viewers? Um, no, I suppose everything we always ask from the public is, is just to be more aware of the issues that impact um, refugees and asylum seekers and migrants living in Ireland and sometimes the difficulties people have in integrating into our society and integration is a two-way Street. You know, it takes work on the side of people coming into a new community, but that also in, in, it, it, it entails that the host community is yeah. welcoming, yeah. and so it's a it's it's always two way. Yeah, it's, it's so it's a give and take. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that will be the conclusion of uh, this uh, you know uh, uh, interview, and uh, thank you very much for giving us time to uh, interview you on this. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Desmond.